Well, greetings out there in YouTube land, and welcome to part two of our video series on resistors. In today's episode, uh, we'll continue our discussion of Ohm's Law and see how to calculate watts of power, how to select the correct wattage resistor for any application, and we'll perform some typical measurements and calculations using a really nice, completely original Gretz 6150 amp chassis. If this sounds interesting, then please stay tuned. First, let's have a brief review of Ohm's Law as it relates to the calculation of current, voltage, and resistance. And then let's move on to our fourth category, which is how to calculate power in watts. Also, I'm going to provide you with a link so that you can download a really snazzy chart that shows all the formulas necessary to calculate amps, volts, ohms, and power. Here is a really handy chart for Ohm's Law formulas. Now, I have included a link to uh, this particular chart in the video description so that you can download one and keep it for future use. In part one, we used algebra to derive all of the different formulas in which uh, we could calculate uh, ohms of resistance, volts, and amps, if we knew any two of the other uh, measurements, we could calculate the third. Notice that the classic designation for volts is E rather than V, like I've been using. So, when you see E anywhere in this chart, don't be confused. Mentally substitute voltage or voltage drop for the E's, okay? Now, the one uh, parameter that we have not yet discussed in Ohm's Law is power. Power is measured in watts. Now, there are all sorts of fancy definitions or explanations of what power means. Uh, you can talk about joules of energy and work and other uh, things that are so nebulous that most people don't comprehend them. Let's come up with a very simple idea of what power is. Power occurs when energy is converted into another form. We're familiar with this in light bulbs. We run electricity into a light bulb and the energy, which is invisible, is converted into light and heat. We rate light bulbs at, say, 100 watts or 50 watts. And you know that the 100 watt light bulb puts out more light and heat than the 50 watt light bulb. The conversion of energy uh, to heat uh, and light in that case is caused by the friction of the electrons passing through a very restricted passage. In other words, passing through resistance. If we know the current and square it and multiply it times the resistance, we can determine how many watts of power will be created. With resistors, uh, the energy is converted strictly into heat. And it is, again, caused by the friction of the electrons trying to pass through the restriction of the resistor. Heat, in this case, is an undesirable attribute. Uh, it will burn up the resistors. I think we've all seen resistors that have been overheated. If they were subjected to too much power or too much wattage, uh, they overheat and begin to break down. Uh, they self-destruct. So when we're using a resistor in our circuit, we need to know that it is of a wattage rating that is adequate to cope with the amount of friction that's going to develop within it while it serves its purpose within our circuit. Now resistors come in all sizes and generally the larger the resistor the more surface or volume it has to dissipate heat. And we've seen the tiny little quarter watt resistors uh, that you see on printed circuit boards and they can range all the way up to the monstrous 100 watt ballast resistors that uh, we rarely see in uh, guitar amplifiers, but we do see smaller versions of these. It might be 10 or 20 watt resistors. So in today's video, uh, let's do some measurements uh, on an actual amplifier circuit 
and do some calculations and use Ohm's law to determine amps of current, voltage drop, resistance, and power in watts. Okay, with that review uh, behind us, let's take a look at the amplifier that will be our subject uh, for today's investigation. Since we're all certified ampaholics here, I know you'll get a kick out of seeing it. Uh, and then we'll go into the chassis, take uh, some measurements, and do some calculations. Okay, here's today's patient. Uh, it's a really nice 1960 uh, Gretsch Model 6150 amp. Flawless handle. Really nice grill cloth. Um, the Gretsch logo. And then that very unusual type of covering that Gretsch applies to its cabinets. Actually, Valco, who built this for Gretsch. You can see the control panel is extremely simple. This is sort of like Gretsch's or Valco's um, answer to the Fender Champ. Okay, we'll have two inputs, simple volume, control, pilot light, and fuse. Uh, there's the typical Valco type of pinstripes on the uh, control panel to give it sort of a snazzy Art Deco look. Uh, you can see here uh, the upper rear panel, which I'm going to remove in just a second. Uh, one of the things that's always nice with the amps that Valco made for Gretsch is they stamp the model number of the amp down in the floor. Uh, as you can see, it has the original uh, Jensen speaker, although the little sticker, I believe, has come off the back. I even left the original Valco gray two-prong power cord. Um, there is a plate down here with a serial number uh, that allows you to accurately date when the app was built. So that's it. As you can see, just stock is a stone, and uh, this then will be our test subject. Okay, the upper back door is removed. We'll look inside and see the another typical thing. Valco would put a couple extra 2-amp fuses in an envelope on the side. These have never been used. You'll see that the chassis is just very, very simple and basic, which makes it perfect for our use today as a test subject. Um, nothing's been changed. Original filter capacitors, uh, original speaker, and as I said, the dreaded two-prong cord is still intact. Now, before we start taking our measurements, and making our calculations, uh, let's take a brief look at the schematic of this circuit. Okay, here's the schematic of the Gret 6150, and I think we can see that it's very much like the Fender Champ. It has a 12AX7 preamp tube with a volume control in between the two stages of the 12AX7. Uh, there's no tone control. It feeds into a 6V6 output tube, and there's a 5Y3 rectifier. Now, here's what I propose for an uh, exercise in which we will use Ohm's Law in a very practical way to calculate the plate current of this 6V6 tube, but in two different ways. In the first method of plate current uh, calculation, we're going to use the cathode bias resistor. We will measure the voltage drop across the resistor, and we will measure its accurate actual resistance. Then using Ohm's Law, in which the current is equal to the voltage drop divided by the resistance, we can effectively calculate the plate current that's flowing through the cathode to the plate. The second method will be to accurately measure the resistance of the output transformer primary and then to measure the voltage drop across the output transformer primary and in so doing accurately calculate the amount of current that's coming out of the plate of the 6V6. So one method will be calculating the amount of current flowing into the tube and the Output transformer method will be the amount of current flowing out of the tube. And I must tell you, there is going to be a difference. Uh, I know it's hard to believe, but you think whatever flows in is going to be coming out. But we're going to see that's not necessarily true. So, with that said, uh, let's get started taking our measurements on our GRET 6150 circuit. 
and uh, accurately calculate the plate current for the 6V6 using Ohm's Law and in two different ways. In my never-ending efforts to plumb the depth of Rusty's great intellect, I have constructed another test here. Now this one will be several of his favorite things. One, the tennis ball. Number two, the dog cookie. And number three, which is almost unfair because it's so tempting, is the female poodle with tennis ball. Okay, go ahead and lay your bets. Let's see which one he prefers. Here comes our test subject. Let's see. What's it going to be, Rusty? What do we like? Uh-oh, looks like love conquers all. No, back to the food. Tennis ball, what's it going to be, buddy? Decisions, decisions. Oh, uh, well, I guess as we get older, food's all that really matters. Okay, let's start off here with the 330 ohm cathode bias resistor. You may have noticed that Cathode bias resistors sometimes are rated at a little higher wattage than other resistors, and we're going to find out why in just a minute. After we accurately measure what the real resistance is across this resistor, let's measure the voltage drop across it, and then let's also measure the voltage uh, potential between the plate and the cathode. And we're going to write that information down on this sheet. Okay, now I'm measuring the actual resistance. Remember it says it's 330. In reality it's 359.3 .3, and I'm going to subtract the resistance that are uh, in my test probes and come up with a net value. And the net resistance is 356 ohms. Now we'll switch to DC voltage and I'm going to turn on the amp and we will measure the voltage drop across the cathode bias resistor. As we will see, the value will jump around a little as the circuit warms up, but then it's going to home in on a stable value. And that value looks to be around 14.1. So I write that down on my sheet. Next, I turn off the amp, drain the filter capacitors, and then move the leads over between pin 3, which is the plate, and pin 8, which is the cathode. And I'm going to measure the uh, plate voltage within this 6V6. Again, it's going to jump around a bit, but hopefully it will stabilize. And it looks like it's going to be about 270.4 which I write down here under plate to cathode voltage. Now to thoroughly evaluate this power supply, let's take a few more readings. Let's see what the B plus voltage is as it comes directly from the rectifier. Notice it comes up here and it goes through the primary of the output transformer. Let's measure the resistance across the primary of the output transformer. Measure the voltage drop across it. And then let's measure what the B plus is uh, at the plate or pin 3 of the 6V6. Well, as we can see here, the B plus does come out of the rectifier, but uh, on the schematic it says pin 2, but in reality it's coming out of pin 8. Either one will work. So let's measure here from pin 8 to ground to see what the maximum B plus is from the rectifier. Okay, we turn on the amp. And we see that the voltage ri uh, comes out rather high at first, which is typical. And then it'll drop down to the accurate reading, which appears to be about 293.7 or 8, 293.8. Now to measure the resistance of the primary of the output transformer, we're going to measure between pin 8 of the rectifier and pin 3 of the 6V6. And we can see that that resistance is about 274 ohms. 
Now leaving my test leads in place, I'll move down here to DC volts, turn on the amplifier, and we're going to see what the voltage drop is across the primary winding of the output transformer. And it appears to have stabilized at about 10.06 volts. And then finally we're going to measure the B plus between the plate or pin 3 of the 6 uh, V6 and ground. And it's stabilizing at about 283 point Three. Okay, now let's use these measurements and Ohm's law to calculate the plate current through the 6V6 by two different methods. First off, the cathode bias method. We said that the accurate measurement of the resistance was 356 ohms. Uh, the voltage drop was 14.18 volts. So voltage divided by resistance will equal current. 14.18 divided by 356 is 39.8 milliamps of current. Second, let's look at the output transformer method. Accurate measurement of resistance, 274 ohms. Voltage drop was 10.06 volts. Therefore, if the current is equal to the voltage drop divided by the resistance, 10.06 divided by 274, is 36.7 milliamps. Now there is a difference here of 3.1 milliamps. And you have to ask yourself why. Uh, as I said earlier, the current flowing into the tube should be the same as the current flowing out of the tube. But it would appear that more current flows in than flows out. Now the only exit that presents itself is the screen. Remember that the screen in a pentode is charged up positively almost as much as the plate and serves to accelerate the electrons to increase the flow of current through the tube. Well, what about the electrons that adhere to or strike the screen instead of the plate? Uh, those that strike the plate create a plate current those that strike the screen create a screen current and the screen current will allow some of the current passing through the tube to exit before it reaches the plate and the screen current on a 6v6 is generally around two and a half to three milliamps which is exactly the difference between the readings that we got so not all the current that's flowing into the tube flows out. Some of it takes a shortcut through the screen and exits the system. And although it's really not the topic of today's video, uh, it's still of great interest, I think, because when we're biasing our 6V6 in a single-ended amp like this, if we use the cathode bias method, we'll get a 10.76 watt plate dissipation value. Whereas if we use the output transformer primary method, we'll get a 9.92 watt plate dissipation reading, a little lower. But because it doesn't include the screen current, this would be the more accurate of the two measurements. Now that we know the current through the cathode bias resistor, we also know its exact resistance, and we know the voltage drop across that resistor, we can calculate the power that it will encounter or have to, the amount of heat that it will have to dissipate by three different methods. Uh, the three that are on the chart. P equals I squared R gives us 0 0.564 watts, a little over a half watt. P equals VI gives us 0 0.564 watts, exactly the same value. And power uh, equals a voltage drop squared divided by resistance, 0 0.564 watts. So as we can see, uh, knowing any two of the measurements of this resistor, we can accurately calculate its power. And as you can see, they specify a one watt resistor, uh, which is about double 
the 0 0.564 watts that the uh, resistor will normally encounter. So as you can see, they have doubled the expected wattage to give themselves a little safety factor. And that's a good rule of thumb. So anytime you calculate wattage of a resistor, it's a good idea to double that value uh, when you're selecting the resistor to use. And if you were to calculate uh, the wattage uh, across each of the resistors in the rest of the circuit, you'd find that all of them are much, much lower than 0 0.564 watts. Therefore, you could use uh, half watt resistors probably if you wished. I tend to use one watt resistors throughout my circuits, but the rule of thumb is always use at least double whatever the wattage is that you calculate the resistor will encounter. Now, before we leave, let's take a look at what voltage drop really means. We measured the voltage drop across the output transformer primary and found that it was 10.06 volts. Uh, I also measured the B plus as it came straight from the rectifier and it was 293.8 volts. Then after that voltage drop, it's 283.3 volts. I think you can see that 293.8 minus the 10.06 is approximately 283.3. So a voltage drop is exactly what it implies. The voltage from this position to this position dropped 10 volts and it is reflected in the measurements of the voltage on either side of that resistance. Well, that's about it on this two-part video series uh, covering resistors. We found that by using Ohm's Law, if you know any two measurements uh, that apply to a resistor, you can always calculate the third value. Um, we covered power, we found out what power is, and the formulas that can be used to calculate it. We used Ohm's Law to uh, calculate the uh, plate current in the 6V6 of a Gretsch amp by two different methods. We found there was a disparity between those measurements and we found out why. Also, we calculated the power rating of the cathode bias resistor using three different formulas. So I would like to think this has been a productive series. I hope you agree. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also hope that you'll join us again for future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.